Northwest Airlines Flight 255, a McDonnell Douglas MD-82, crashed shortly after takeoff from Detroit Metropolitan Airport on August 16, 1987, at about 8.46 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 046 Coordinated Universal Time August 17, killing all six crew members and 148 of its 149 passengers, along with two people on the ground. The sole survivor was a four-year-old girl, Cecilia Sicken, who sustained serious injuries. It was the second deadliest aviation accident at the time in the United States. Topic aircraft and crew The aircraft involved in the crash was a twin-engine McDonnell Douglas MD-82 registration number N312RC a derivative of the McDonnell Douglas DC-9 and part of the McDonnell Douglas MD-80 series of aircraft. The jet was manufactured in 1981, entering service with Republic Airlines and acquired by Northwest Airlines in its merger with Republic in 1986. The aircraft was powered by two Pratt & Whitney JT-8D217 turbofan engines. At the time of the accident, the aircraft was painted in a hybrid livery between Northwest Airlines and Republic Airlines, featuring blue Republic striping with red Northwest titles and a white tail. Flight 255's captain was 57 year old John R. Mouse, from Las Vegas, Nevada. Mouse was an experienced pilot who had worked for the airline for 31 years, flying Fairchild F-27s, Boeing 727S Boeing 757S, McDonnell Douglas DC-9s, and McDonnell Douglas MD-80 aircraft, including the MD-82. Mouse had logged 20,859 flight hours during his career, including 1,359 hours on the MD-82. Other pilots who had flown with Mouse described him as a competent and capable pilot who had a reputation for operating by the book. The flight's first officer was 35 year old David J. Dodds, from Galena, Illinois. Dodds had logged 8,044 flight hours during his career including 1,604 hours on the MD-82, and had worked for the airline for more than eight years. Other than one training report during his probationary period, all of the airline's captains with whom Dodds had flown graded him as average or above average. Other pilots who had recently flown with Dodds later described his performance in favorable terms. Topic: <inaudible> Accident. The flight crew began August 16, 1987, by operating the incident aircraft as Northwest Flight 750 from Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport, flying to MBS International Airport in Saginaw, Michigan. Departing Saginaw, the flight crew operated the same aircraft as Flight 255, flying to John Wayne Airport in Santa Ana, California, with intermediate stops at Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport in Romulus, Michigan near Detroit, and Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport in Arizona. Other than a minor problem taxiing to the arrival gate, the flight from Saginaw to Detroit was uneventful. During a stopover in Detroit, a Northwest Airlines mechanic inspected the aircraft and the logbook. 
At about 2029, the flight crew took their seats. At approximately 2032 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, Flight 255 departed the gate in Detroit with 149 passengers including 21 children and six crew members. The crew read out the before start checklist, and started the engines at 20 hours 33 minutes and 4 seconds began to start the engines directly. The total weight of the airliner was 144,046 pounds, 65,338 kilograms, 65,338 kilograms with a maximum allowable 146,058 pounds, 66,251 kilograms at 20 hours 34 minutes and 40 seconds the pushback tub was disconnected from the aircraft and at 20 hours 34 minutes and 50 seconds the controller cleared flight 255 to taxi to runway number 3C Central. The crew was also informed about the update of the ATIS information, to which Dodds reported on weather data update. At 20 hours 35 minutes and 43 seconds the ground controller instructed to use taxiway C and switch to the frequency 119.45 MHz to communicate with the another controller. Dodds acknowledged the instructions to follow the taxiways, but did not repeat the new frequency and did not tune the radio to it. The dispatch packet provided by the airline included takeoff performance data based on using runways 21L or 21R, but the flight was cleared for takeoff on Detroit's runway 3C, the shortest available runway. The flight crew had to reconfigure the onboard computer for taking off on runway 3C. Dodds also recalculated the allowable takeoff weight for the flight and concluded that the actual takeoff weight is within normal limits. In the process of taxiing, Captain Mouse missed the required turn, so the Dodds contacted the ground controller and received instructions on how to proceed to runway number 3C, and also to switch to 119.45 MHz. Dodds again acknowledged the instructions and this time acknowledged the new frequency, and switched to it. The second ground controller specified the route to runway 3C. The crew also received a brief weather report. At 20 hours 42 minutes and 11 seconds flight 255 was instructed to line up and wait at the beginning of runway 3C. The controller advised that there would be a three-minute delay to extinguish wake turbulence from the previous aircraft that had taken off. At 20 hours 44 minutes and 4 seconds Flight 255 was cleared for takeoff. Flight 255 made its takeoff roll on Detroit's runway 3C at approximately 20 hours 44 minutes and 21 seconds, with mouse at the controls. However, during the takeoff roll, Mouse noticed that the autothrottle was not engaged, as recorded on the aircraft's cockpit voice recorder CVR. 20 hours 44 minutes and 14 seconds point 18 sound similar to parking brake released. 20 hours 44 minutes and 21 seconds sound of increasing engine power 20 hours 44 minutes and 28 seconds cam 1 won't stay on 20 hours 44 minutes and 28 seconds sound of click 20 hours 44 minutes and 30 seconds cam 2 won't go on 
20 hours 44 minutes and 31 seconds CAM 1 but they won't stay on. 20 hours 44 minutes and 31 seconds CAM 2 OK powers normal. 20 hours 44 minutes and 31 seconds TWR Northwest 1466 Metro Tower traffic you're following as a very short final runway 3 left cleared to land winds 300 at 13. The autothrottle was engaged at 20 hours 44 minutes and 38 seconds. 20 hours 44 minutes and 38 seconds point eight sound of click 20 hours 44 minutes and 42 seconds cam 2 can you get them now there you go 20 hours 44 minutes and 43 seconds cam 2 there on now clamp the CVR then recorded the following 20 hours 44 minutes and 45 seconds point six cam 200 knots 20 hours 44 minutes and 46 seconds point two cam 1 okay 20 hours 44 minutes and 51 seconds TWR Northwest 1466 so far that's approved all advise different 20 hours 44 minutes and 55 seconds cam 1 hash sound of laugh 20 hours 44 minutes and 57 seconds point 1 cam 2 v 1 20 hours 44 minutes and 57 seconds point 7 cam 2 rotate 20 hours 44 minutes and 59 seconds point 1 sound similar to nose gear strut extension 20 hours 45 minutes and 2 seconds point 7 sound similar to nose gear spinning down 20 hours 45 minutes and 5 seconds point 1 sound of stick shaker starts and continues until the end of tape 20 hours 45 minutes and 9 seconds point 1 sound of secondary stall recognition oral warning starts 20 hours 45 minutes and 11 seconds point 4 sound of secondary stall recognition oral warning starts 20 hours 45 minutes and 11 seconds point 4 cam Asterisk right up to the V-bar. 20 hours 45 minutes and 14 seconds point 3 sound of secondary stall recognition oral warning starts. 20 hours 45 minutes and 15 seconds point 7 cam. Ah, hash. 20 hours 45 minutes and 17 seconds point 1 sound of secondary stall recognition oral warning starts 20 hours 45 minutes and 18 seconds 102 um metro tower lifeguard copter 102 uniform mic is ah 20 hours 45 minutes and 19 seconds point 3 sound of first impact 20 hours 45 minutes and 19 seconds point 7 sound of second impact 20 hours 45 minutes and 22 seconds point 7 sound of third impact cam asterisk 20 hours 45 minutes and 23 seconds point 1 sound of fourth impact 20 hours 45 minutes and 24 seconds point 2 sound of fifth impact 20 hours 45 minutes and 24 seconds point 4 sound of sixth impact 20 hours 45 minutes and 24 seconds point 6 sound of 7th impact 
20 hours 45 minutes and 24 seconds. Point seven. End of recording. The plane lifted off the runway at 170 knots, 195 miles per hour, 315 kilometers per hour, and began to roll from side to side just under 50 feet, 15 meters above the ground. The MD-82's rate of climb was greatly reduced as a result of the flaps not being extended, and approximately 2,760 feet 840 meters past the end of runway 3C, the plane's left wing struck a light pole in an airport rental car lot. The impact caused the left wing to start disintegrating and catch fire. The plane rolled 90 degrees to the left, striking the roof of an Avis car rental building. The plane, now uncontrolled, crashed inverted onto Middle Belt Road and struck vehicles just north of its intersection with Wick Road, killing two people on the ground in a car. It then broke apart, with the fuselage skidding across the road, disintegrating and bursting into flames as it hit a railroad overpass and the overpass of eastbound Interstate 94 I-94. Topic. Aftermath Topic. Investigation The National Transportation Safety Board conducted an investigation into the crash. Eyewitnesses stated that Flight 255's takeoff roll was longer than usual, and that the aircraft took off at a steeper angle. Whether the flaps and slats were extended, the testimony of the witnesses varied, but most responded that they were extended, although they could not tell how far. The cockpit voice recorder CVR, provided evidence of the flight crew's omission of the taxi checklist. Although the stall warning was enunciated, investigators determined from the CVR that the oral takeoff warning was not enunciated by that warning system. The NTSB was unable to determine a cause for the electrical power failure in the central oral warning system cause. The failure of the takeoff warning system was caused by the loss of input 28 volts DC. Electric power between the airplanes left DC, bus and the cause unit. The interruption of the input power to the cause occurred at the P-40 circuit breaker. The mode of interruption could not be determined. The NTSB also could not determine if the circuit breaker had been tripped, intentionally opened, or if electric current failed to flow through the breaker to the cause while the breaker was closed, because the P-40 circuit breaker was badly damaged during the accident, it was impossible for the safety board to determine positively its pre-impact condition. There were three possible conditions that would have caused power to be interrupted at the P-40 circuit breaker. The circuit breaker was intentionally opened by either the flight crew or maintenance personnel. The circuit breaker tripped because of a transient overload and the flight crew did not detect the open circuit breaker, or the circuit breaker did not allow current to flow to the cause power supply and did not enunciate the condition by tripping. Topic. NTSB conclusions 
The NTSB published its final report on May 10, 1988, in which it concluded that the accident was caused by pilot error. The National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of the accident was the flight crew's failure to use the taxi checklist to ensure that the flaps and slats were extended for takeoff. Contributing to the accident was the absence of electrical power to the airplane takeoff warning system which thus did not warn the flight crew that the airplane was not configured properly for takeoff. The reason for the absence of electrical power could not be determined. Topic: Long-term aftermath After the crash Northwest followed standard procedure, the airline no longer used 255 as a flight number. From late 1987 until the company merged with Delta Air Lines in early 2010, the last non-stop flight from Detroit to Phoenix was renumbered as Flight 261. Delta continues the retirement of 255 by Northwest. As of 2019, there is no Delta Flight 255. Topic: Memorials. In memory of the victims, a black granite memorial was erected in 1994. It stands surrounded by blue spruce trees at the top of the hill at Middle Belt Road and I-94, the site of the crash. The memorial has a dove with a ribbon in its beak reading, "Their spirit still lives on." Below it are the names of those who perished in the crash. Another monument to the victims, many of whom were from the Phoenix area, stands next to Phoenix City Hall. On August 16, 2007, the 20th anniversary of the crash, a memorial service was held at the site. For some people affected by the incident, it was their first return to the site since the crash. On August 16, 2012, the 25th anniversary of the crash, another memorial service was held at the crash site. Family and friends of the victims and others from across the Metro Detroit area, including local media, attended, and a local priest read each victim's name aloud. Many attendees had seen recent local media footage of Cecilia Sicken, now known by her married name Crocker, and few knew her whereabouts or condition after the crash. On August 16, 2017, the 30th anniversary of the crash, yet another memorial service held at the crash site. Topic. In popular culture The story of the disaster was featured in a ninth season episode of the Discovery Channel Canada, National Geographic series Mayday known as Air Emergency or Air Disasters in the U.S., Mayday in Ireland and Air Crash Investigation in the U.K. and the rest of world. The episode is titled, Alarming Silence, broadcast in some countries as, Cockpit Chaos. It explores the events surrounding the crash and its investigation, with interviews of Flight 255 rescue workers, investigators and other MD-80 pilots. Cecilia Sicken appears in a 2013 documentary Soul Survivor, about four sole survivors of plane crashes. She did not speak publicly about the crash until 2013, when the documentary was released. 
Sikken has a tattoo of an airplane on her wrist in remembrance and says that she is not afraid of flying. Around the August NASCAR weekend at nearby Michigan International Speedway, Tom Higgins posts his recollections of Northwest 255. Higgins, then of the Charlotte Observer, and fellow NASCAR beat reporters Steve Wade and Gary McCready of Grand National Scene arrived at a hotel near the Detroit Metropolitan Airport awaiting a Monday morning flight to Charlotte, North Carolina, after finishing coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 that afternoon, and were witnesses to the plane crash. Topic. See also List of accidents and incidents involving commercial aircraft Topic. Similar accidents British European Airways Flight 548 Delta Air Lines Flight 1141 Lapa Flight 3142 Lufthansa Flight 540 Mandala Airlines Flight 91 Spanair Flight 5022 Notes <laughs>